Hi, I'm Colin G. West, and this is Poker Science. In many ways, the biggest, newest thing in the world of poker is not shot clocks or big blind antes or whatever this shirt is that Ike Haxton has been wearing. It's artificial intelligence, AI computer programs that have been getting remarkably good at playing Texas Hold'em. The best computer programs out there are already essentially unbeatable at heads-up limit play. And depending on who you ask, they may already be better than the pros at no limit as well. The biggest names in the field at the moment are the University of Alberta, whose AI Cephas can play a practically perfect game of limit hold'em, and Carnegie Mellon University, whose computer programs have focused more on the no limit side of the game. Carnegie Mellon in particular made headlines in 2015 when its AI program Clodico took on a set of heads-up specialists like Doug Polk, Bjorn Lee, and Don Kim. In that match, the human players came out ahead after playing 80,000 total hands over the course of 14 days. But the victory was a slim one, about $9 per hand on average in a game with $100 big blinds. Enough to be a clear win, but hardly a resounding victory for us carbon-based life forms. Then in 2017, the Carnegie Mellon crew came back with a new improved AI called Libratus, which took on a similar group of experts at a casino in Pittsburgh. This time they played a total of 120,000 hands, but in the end, the only player in the black was Libratus, winning a total of about $15 per hand. There are definitely some reasons to be worried about the rise of poker software that can beat the experts, but I for one welcome our new robot overlords. Technological and intellectual progress like this is inevitable, and if it's going to happen anyway, we might as well use it as an opportunity to learn a little bit about our own games. Now for the time being, I don't want to get too specific about the tactics Libratus used. Libratus did some weird stuff, like open limping or going check call, check raise frequently on fairly dry boards. It's going to take some time to disentangle what's a brilliant new strategy from what was just the computer experimenting with something or trying to confuse the humans. It's also worth noticing that some of Libratus' most successful unorthodox tactics, like making frequent overbet bluffs, are probably optimized for use against very high-level players. So if you're planning on taking on Don Kim next week in a heads-up game, maybe give it a try. But against the calling stations in your typical home match, maybe not so much. That said, there are still a few things we can all learn from the success of Libratus and similar AI programs. First of all, be careful about your reasons for making decisions especially when it comes to bluffing. Surprisingly enough for a computer program, Libratus actually bluffs very well. But as one of his designers put it, it just doesn't know it's bluffing when it does it. It doesn't set out to be deceitful. I love this. It means Libratus is never bluffing just because it thinks it deserves the pot. It means it's never bluffing just because it wants to get back at an aggressive opponent, or because it watched that Moneymaker Farha clip a few too many times on YouTube. It never bluffs for the sake of bluffing. It just bets the amount that it thinks gives it the best opportunity to win chips. Sometimes it's got the cards to back that up, sometimes not. I think we could almost all use a little more of this kind of cold calculation in our bluffing, making decisions based on the range of cards that everyone could have, not just the specific cards that we do have, and never bluffing just because it's fun and thrilling, although it is. Now, the second thing we can learn comes from the structure of the Libratus program itself. Libratus actually uses a relatively straightforward and consistent strategy in its preflop and flop play. In fact, the biggest difference between Libratus and its predecessor Clodico, the one that couldn't quite beat the pros, is that Libratus engages an additional level of calculations when it reaches the turn. As human beings, we can take a similar approach when we work on our own gameplay. Notice that before the flop, there's comparatively little information to be considered, so the most important thing is just to have a solid overall strategy. In fact, if you're fairly new to competitive poker, one of the biggest, fastest ways you can improve your gameplay is just by developing a clear sense of the opening ranges. Master that before you worry about how to outmaneuver your opponents on the river. River decisions are less frequent in the first place, and more importantly, solid preflop play should set you up for easier decisions later in the hand anyhow. Finally, Libratus teaches us to know our limits. Libratus was fairly consistently ahead throughout the competition, but it didn't really begin to open up a big lead until the final few days. This was probably partly because it was learning the player's weaknesses, but also probably in part because Libratus is immune to fatigue. As humans, we're dangerously susceptible to making mistakes as our mental energy wears down. And worse, 
the very lack of mental energy that makes our gameplay slip can make it harder to notice the dip in performance. We may never have the limitless energy that Libratus does, but we can try to figure out our limits in advance, decide what time of night we're going to quit playing, and be vigilant for signs of a dip in play. Of course, maybe the best thing that we could emulate from these AI programs is the fact that they don't shout one time whenever they're all in. Oh, and they don't say, there's only two ways to play jacks and both of them are wrong, as though they were the first people to think that up. And of course, a computer program has never once been spotted berating a dealer after a bad run out. So let's all try to be just a little bit more like Libratus. It might make the world a slightly better place.